So, made a new friend a couple of weeks ago, Ryan Seven in England, who had sent me something about the Sator Square. Now, I had come across the Sator Square. I, I, I knew quite a bit about it. Uh, but I just love this guy and he's from Manchester where I'm from and he's a young guy with lots of passion for his for, and lots of humor and he's doing a lot of brilliant stuff and I highly recommend you look him up uh, on it uh, just just do Ryan 7 R-Y-A-N 7 S-E-V-E-N because I can't recall off the top of my head what the name of of his site is but you'll find it and so he sent me something, and I want to share this with you because uh, not not what he sent, but what what it then triggered me. And it, it uh, first, some of these things start out like a, a detour. You go, I don't know what this is about, but I really sense there's something important here. And I did a lot of work on it, and I knew that there's, there's something about the Sator Square that I'd forgotten. You know, it was years ago when. Oh, I, I put it on the back burner. So, but the talk about how synchronous the universe is, because after working on this for just a couple of days, and I really shouldn't have been working on it because I thought I've got so much to do. There's no point in my trying to do all of this. This is ridiculous. But I just knew that I had to because I knew it was leading somewhere. Um, and so this is unfinished, but I'd like your comments on it. But what I want to convey to you is the magic of how this turns into something so much bigger. After working on this whole thing and the center line of the Sator Square, a movie comes out, right? So... Hold that thought, think what that movie might be. So I'm gonna play a little game of um, Cosmic Scrabble. Now I don't know how they play Scrabble out in the cosmos, but I would imagine they do it pretty, way, pretty much the way we do. They, they pick seven letters from a bag at random. So uh, let's just assume they, they draw these letters. But I'm going to just guess that because based on what this whole thing is about, I'm going to guess that you take those and you sort of jumble them out. Step, strep, strep throat, can I use that? Pest, haste, yeah, paste, no, uh, rest. Nap rest, I need a nap, yes, C can I use that? No, you can't use that. All right, rent, rent, parent, pa oh, parents, got it. I got a word, got a whole word, parents. Anyway. You might, in this cosmic Scrabble game, you might be allowed, I'm postulating, based on what they sent us, the, they're allowed to duplicate and, and their letters and say, well, any letter that you've got, you can take any, a certain number of multiples of them. I mean, obviously, I'm just setting this up. And you can buy a, a vowel. <laughs> right, I've just made up rules for my version of Cosmic Scrabble because, obviously, you know where this is going because I've preempted it by telling you. But that's my just my way of setting it up to give you what is called the Sator Square. And the Sator Square is very special because you revolve it around and around, and it's always going to be saying the same thing palindromically left to right and top to bottom. It says Sator, Arepo, Tenet, Opera, Rotas. And it says it top to bottom, and it says Rotas, top to bottom there, and it says it's along the bottom, and no matter how you twist it around, it's always going to say the same. So, and people have wondered about this for a long time and said, what, what exactly is this? Because the earliest version of it that we've seen is in um, Pompeii, I believe, in AD 79, where there weren't a lot of Christians. But the central solution to this whole thing is that it spells out this wonderful cross, Paternoster, with Alpha Omega and Omega Alpha put out on, its, on the sides. And so people have assumed that this is somehow an early Christian symbolism. And yet 
there's all kinds of evidence that say that it predates that, predates Christianity. And particularly what attracted me was that Ryan, had, Ryan Seven had said he'd found a, a church in close to Manchester, where I am from, uh, where there's a very, very ancient uh, stone marker there with a Sator square on it. But Peter Noster is the Our Father, right? Peter Noster, Our Father, which is the Christian prayer or the Catholic prayer and the whole 30 years war that I'm talking about in the Fisher Kings series is centered around that. The reformists want to do away with the old rule. The, mold, the old mosaic laws don't apply to us anymore. They were from a different time. We want to be able to say the prayer in English. We want to read the Bible in English. The Catholics want us to just be kept distant because we are the gatekeepers and it, it must be sung in Latin and no one else who isn't educated can know about it. So that was, that was the big thing that started the whole, oh, you know, the whole problems with reformists and Catholics. So Peter Noster. Now, it's really interesting that in the gravestone, as I've just shown you, although I haven't shown you this part of it, we'll get into this in the next masterclass. John D, for he is the person who did this, has ligatured another two set of letters together besides the THs, a T and an E, and an H and an E. The TE is, is the participle et, which is literally the way it's pronounced et, and that's so why it's written as ET, but it, what it literally is is the aleph and the tav the beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega, the, the whole, both ends of the, the very uh, encoding that from, from which we get the I am that I am. And so he puts it in as et backwards, T-E, blessed with, with a T-E, uh, but he uses it Oh, dozens of times, all over, all kinds of codes. And so I know very well, this is a, a John D. signature mark, T-E. And then he also has the H-E ligature together. H-E is the Hebrew letter He, which occurs twice in the name yod He vav He. So it's the name of God. And literally that Te and Et, backwards and forwards, mirror image, north and south, east and west, is, is central to the Seto square. It literally means the beginning and end, the I am that I am. And also then in the gravestone, you have what I showed you, the THs and the triple tau, which are the triple tau and the fourth T, which we'll get into in the next masterclass. What is exactly that fourth T? What does that mean? So it's there in the Seto square, literally right in the center of it. And then another thing that John D does is he turns the N on its side and makes it into a, what we call in England a Z, but over here we call it a Z, N, Z, because the N looks very much like the Aleph, the Hebrew letter Aleph, and it turned on its side then becomes a Z. So what he's doing with this, when John D uses it, he's turning the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet into the last letter of the Roman alphabet. An Aleph, that looks like an N, turned on its side becomes a Z. And I thought John D was the only person doing this because I found it in his codes everywhere. But then I, I realized it goes much, much deeper than that because it's actually a very ancient Catholic ritual. Here's a, a, an encoding that's used by the Templars which shows the connection between the Greek alphabet and the Roman alphabet. And in those days, I and J were interchangeable and U and V were interchangeable. So there were only 24 letters, not 26, as we now have. And so those 24 match the 24 Greek letters. And thus the M and the N represent the alpha and the omega. And the alpha and the omega represent the A and the Z. And thus the the Z on its side being the N is the same as the Alpha and the Omega. And that it bears itself out in this ancient ritual where you consecrate a church by putting these two alphabets 
crossing each other. This is actually happening in Westminster Abbey where they're consecrating the church. So they consecrate the floor this way with the two alphabets. And the rules for which they have to do it are written in this very special book where they tell you this is the way you do it. And they're showing you that literally the, the A to Z, the A to M is equivalent to the N, the A to the M and the N to the Omega and the A to the M and the N to the Z are equivalent. A to the M is the equivalent of the N to the Z. The A to the M and the N to the Omega, the Alpha Omega, they're all the equivalent. So the N is the A, the N is the Z. So it's not just D that's using it this way. I found this out years after I was discovering that D was using it. This N turned on its side is a Z. And so I find it very interesting that the Sator square has just this one N in the middle, which of course gets turned on its side as you turn the square around. And, and yet it's still got this overall beautiful meaning. And I thought, well, if however this was conveyed to us, no one knows where it came from. As I say, the earliest version is around about 79 AD, but who knows if we might find this ultimately at Gobekli Tepe or, Tepe or wherever. The thing is, if that's the case, it probably goes much, much deeper. And I started to look at the corners and I thought, okay, well, are there, are there words here? Because the typical uh, solution is Sato represents Saturn. Aleppo is a farmer. They don't know. They just assume it's a farmer because there's no word Aleppo that means anything. Tenet is literally uh, hold or to, to hold or to take. Opera is the works and the rotas is the plow. But of course it has a much deeper meaning than that. That, that, that is all aiming towards the idea of the, uh, the plowman taking his, uh, the, the, the works of, of his sweat of his brow. And, but that's a, just a very mundane meaning. Really, Rotas has got to be about the whole rate, rotating of the uh, equinox, I believe. And so it's this bigger, deeper subject. And on, on a deeper level, it goes into, well, Saturn is really uh, this, this god who, whose wife was op op Opis, um, uh, from which is the base of the root of the word opera. And so, and her wife, his wife gave birth to all these kids. And Saturn was jealous because he believed his children were going to overturn him sometime when they grew up. And so Saturn ate all his children. And so Opis came to the husband Saturn eventually when she gave birth to Jupiter. And she wouldn't give him Jupiter. She gave him instead a stone. And of course, all this is some deeply embedded metaphysical and metaphorical meaning. It's not some God that ate his children. It's got this deeper meaning and ways for us to search it out. And what does it mean? But what, what would he eat as a stone in place of Jupiter? Jupiter then grows up to be uh, of age where he can uh, fight his father and get the, his siblings back out of the father's stomach. So that's as far as the meaning goes that everybody gives as a, as a representation. I'm suggesting it goes much deeper that these corners, uh, you see the word astra. What is astra in Latin? Well, it's a star and it has the astra form or it can be astre or it can be astro. So, and down here you have porto and Porto is, <laughs> well, it's got a couple of different uh, variations, Porto or Porta. It means a passage, a way, a gate. It means I pierce, I traverse, to go, to traverse, to pass through, a means of passage. Porto, Porta, Latin, Porte. It's all there. On this right-hand side, you've got paro. Paro means to bring forth. I prepare. I prepare. And down here, aras. Aras is the altar or a sac sanctuary or a refuge. Um, <laughs> do you see where this is going? 
I mean, I just throw it open to you. This is, an, this is an unfinished work that I thought you might be interested in seeing because it's got, I mean, literally on the face of it, it is taking you to a far deeper level and it would not surprise me if this far deeper level were the truth, that this was literally what is Astro Porto. It's a stargate, yes, <laughs> it's a portal. On the left-hand side, you have Pateo, I am open. What? I am open. The passageway is open from the Latin verb patens. And so if it's saying open, oh yeah, there it is, even in English, just in case you didn't get it. And you open it in the center, which is the center of the word tenet. And so by now you know that the movie I'm talking about that just came out. Stargate. Astra Porto. I prepare an altar. I am open through the Alpha Omega, through the et, the beginning and the end of the whole thing. The Pater Noster, the Our Father. So, <laughs> but is it Pater Noster? Is Rose T, Rose Tau. Rose Tau is the name of originally of Cairo, of where the pyramids are, Giza. Rose Tau is the original name of Giza. Ros Tau, Rose Cross, Rossi Crucians. That's where they get their name from. from Christian Rosenkreutz, Rosenkreutz, Christian Rosenkreutz and the Golden Stone from the Rosicrucian manifestos that came out in 1614, 1615, 1616, mostly attributed to John Dee and Francis Bacon. Who's Rosenkreutz? He's Christian Rosenkreutz, the, the putative leader of the original Rosicrucian movement and in Chemical Wedding, he, he tells the story of going on this journey, this initiatory journey where he has to become a Knight of the Golden Stone. Rosenkreutz becomes a Knight of the Golden Stone. Hamlet has Rosenkrantz and Guildenstern show up out of nowhere and they are mysterious characters whose real intent is obviously to kill Hamlet on his way back to England, but he turns the tables on them. It is deep stuff, man. Do you think the man from Stratford, whoever he was, and has, has our friend answered us on that? Has he told us who he is? Um, is essentially telling us that the, 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 a man from a country sticks like Stratford comes and knows, knows these Rosicrucian secrets and writes about them. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Rosenkreutz and the Golden Stone Knights. There's something to look into there, folks, because stone is really the philosopher's stone and Petra is a stone. Petra, it's stone, stone, stone cold evidence that this is far deeper than we think. It's the philosopher's stone, obviously. The geometry of the philosopher's stone, Rose Tau, the Rosicrucian movement. Now, what blew me away was not just sort of finding all this in that, but that literally two days after I'd worked on this, this movie Tenet comes out. The new Chris Nolan movie. <laughs> and what is it about? It's about reversing time. And he actually has the main protagonist in it is, is well, uh, the person called the protagonist is, is something else. But the main evil guy in it is played by Kenneth Branagh. And he's, he's called Sator. And then there's, uh, uh, I think, an arms dealer called Arapo. And then the, the, there's a whole thing that happens right at the very beginning. There's a terrorist attack in an opera house. And then later on, you see them go to a place that is a, is a company, it's called Rotas. So he's playing on this metaphor. He never explicitly goes to it. He never tells you it's the Sato Square. 
but the whole idea of tenet coming backwards and forwards it ends with a 10 minute scene i'm giving you i'm not giving you really giveaways here because no doubt it's all over the internet now anyway that the, these these details i just wondered what you all thought of it because literally that's an example of synchronicity that just blows my mind i didn't know this movie was coming out and it literally came out it, the news came out about it like oh we can't see it because of covid but boy when you see it and i'm actually going to go see it on uh, monday with robert edward grant <laughs> so <laughs> i'll uh, well i've already seen it obviously as i told you i'm seeing it for the second time because it's got all these references in it and so interesting huh that's how they play cosmic scrabble 